These burglars, they are very professional. Montgomery County 911, what's the address of the emergency? Welcome to another episode of Voices of Service. Today we have with us Detective James Lee from our Rockville District Station to talk about a theft group that is affecting our community today. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Great. So we were just reminiscing before we, before we started talking. One of your first cases uh, in Rockville. Yes. Was, that was 2018. How Correct. long have you been on? Been on for uh, approximately 12 years now. 12 years? 12 okay, years. so you're, you're one of, you're probably similar to me when I came on. We, this is a great department. There's so many things you can do. I guess you decided you wanted to be a detective. Yes. Okay. Pretty early on in my career. Yeah? What, what is it about investigations that you like? It's just um, the ability to kind of handle cases um, the way that I, the pace that I want to. Mm -hmm. um, and just having a network of people that I could kind of um, connect with and, and solve cases. Um, and just, it's, it's, it's a learning thing for me. I'm okay. all constantly learning, I'm still learning okay. uh, to be just a better detective. Okay, yeah, I, and you do that because sometimes these things are like very complex puzzles, mm -hmm. right? Now your first, your first case was a problem employee that, well, we, we, won't, we won't say what they were doing, but, but it, it wasn't good, but we helped out our partners over in the, uh, in the uh, alcohol and beverage uh, uh, services. So, yes. but, but today we're gonna talk about uh, something, a trend that, to be honest, we've seen in policing in Montgomery County for a long time, mm. but, and, and these trends, they keep coming up. So what, we're gonna talk about burglaries today, right? Yep. We're going to be talking about the South American Theft Group, Correct. also known as the Dinnertime Burglars. Yep. Correct. You want to kind of walk us through what we're seeing with that group? Yeah, just to start off, um, uh, SATGE, short for South American Theft Group, um, they're a group out of uh, Chile and Colombia. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they're professional burglars, really. Um, they're going in crews of about two to four, usually. Um, they're targeting high-end homes in uh, affluent neighborhoods. Um, and um, they just have a, a method that works for them. They're very methodical and um, they're just, they're professionals. And, and they're definitely targeting um, the first district, I know for sure, but also the second district in Bethesda. Okay. Um, so th when you say two to three people, so they're organized back, uh, back in their home country and they're coming over with a purpose. That, that's my understanding. Sometimes right. they, they even meet here in the United States, and um, some are more organized than others, some right. are less formal, but in the case, it's usually groups about two to four. Okay, so it is a form of organized crime to a degree. I mean, we've seen across uh, Montgomery County, we've seen an, a number of different groups. We've seen, uh, uh, well, the, the most famous one going back for a while is Gypsies, right, um, in Montgomery County the same type of distraction thing. Uh, we've seen uh, countries uh, from uh, the Soviet bloc send folks over here that, that uh, uh, do some things. Organized crime, not, not the country. Right. Um, the, uh, we've seen from basically all over the world. That's I was gonna say, so it, it's, it's happening everywhere right. and they're coming here in an organized fashion and I know that they're also called the dinner time burglars. Correct. So why, why is that? So I know that they're organized, is it happening during those hours? Yes, uh, they, they have many different nicknames. Mm -hmm. um, they're also called Chilean uh, theft groups, dinner time burglars. Um, and, and for that reason, um, they, they're hitting around that time, around 7 to 9 p.m. when um, families should be usually home, eating dinner, lights on, um, and they're, they're just watching and they're seeing that um, if they're home or not, and if they're not, that's their opportunity to kind of get in and commit their crimes. But that, that's what we're seeing, the time frame is between, anywhere between 7 and 9 p.m. Now, when we had spoke before, you said that sometimes they'll go in a second floor window or a second floor entry. Why is that? Um, so that, that's, that seems to be, to be the pattern that we're seeing, um, and, and we think it's because um, usually the motion sensors alarms aren't on the second floor. They're usually on the first floor, so they're just trying to um, bypass that and I guess minimize the chances of being caught. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't think people understand, and you know, we talk about see something, say something, right, in these neighborhoods that are strange. Correct. Like, 
like some of the things they need to look for. These burglars, they are very professional. They have, uh, they have a, they have a playbook. Mm. Uh, they know, as you said, with this dinner time group, they know they are watching houses when people should be there eating, and the ones that they're eating in, um, they don't go right. Correct. And then the ones where it's just everything is dark, there's nothing going on. That's that's where they go. Correct. Uh, we've had a lot of rainy weather today. I, I will say when I was a detective, one of the things that I found is we had burglaries go up when rainy when there's rainy weather. Mm -hmm. hmm. uh, I don't know if you've seen that yet as a detective. Um, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And and the reason is no one's looking outside when it's raining. No mm -hmm. one's playing. No one's running around. No one's doing anything in their neighborhoods. So these folks can secrete themselves. We yep. we saw it a lot down in <coughs> some very older established neighborhoods in Silver Spring and in Bethesda. These 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 people would secrete themselves in like the shrubbery and just watch. Yep. And they would figure out where where they can hit, right, and not be caught. Yeah, so. that that's actually similar to how these guys operate as well. Uh, we're seeing more and more that they're coming from the back end. They're not even going to the front because, as you may know doorbell cameras are more prevalent and so right. they're trying to avoid that and they're kind of just in the back wood line um, and these high-end homes also have large backyards wooded areas so they're kind of able to camouflage themselves and um, observe and really watch surveil the house um, for their opportunity to just get inside wow. the uh, and and the other I, and you, you sort of actually Cass was about to hit on it why here? Why, why Bethesda? Why Rockville? There's affluent neighborhoods, um, high-end homes. They're targeting, they're, their main goal is to steal jewelry, right. um, designer handbags, cash. Right. And this group in particular, they're looking for items, property that are not traceable. So mm -hmm. they're not stealing electronics. Right. Um, they're, they're, they're trying to make a quick cash is what they're trying to do. There's a lot of money in that. I Correct. mean, especially... Well, look, you got Bethesda, you got the real real housewives, housewives. of Bethesda, Potomac, right? Yeah. <laughs> originally, Beverly Hills 90210, not a lot of people knew. Correct. That was originally supposed to be about Bethesda, mm -hmm. right? Um, but California's got better weather. I don't know. Um, but, yeah, there's affluent neighborhoods, <clears throat> the handbags, the jewelry, very tough. Especially, what, what are they doing with it when they get it? That's ours. So um, they're not... Um, they're not simply pawning these. Um, they're trying to, again, cover traces, trying to um, avoid the, the ability for law enforcement to track it back to mm -hmm. them. Um, they're going to fences. Uh, fences are, you know, they, they, it could be uh, fences I've heard of are in New York and California. They're all over the place. Okay. But simply, it's, it's, a quick, it's a quick cash for them, and they just, they just kind of get rid of the property, and they have nothing to do with it after that. Now, I know that you've had a story where you've been able to actually get the property back yes. for one of your victims. Yes. Will you share that with sure, us? Sure, absolutely. Um, it was a case in the uh, end of 2022-2023. Um, it was actually a house off Piney Meeting House. Mm -hmm. um, that, that we'll go back to that later, but that's, a, that's an area that's been heavily concentrated with this activity. Okay. Um, and this house, um, uh, there was a, a ton of jewelry, high-end handbags that were stolen. and um, uh, I got to tell you, it was probably all luck on my end. Uh, less than a week later, I get a call from a deputy sheriff in Colorado. Uh, I believe it was Eagle County Sheriff's Office. Great police work, made a traffic stop, and got a consent search. And he kind of had a wherewithal that something wasn't right. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, he had consent search to search the vehicle, saw three males in there, um, and uh, saw woman jewelry and handbags and purses. And one of the purses had a checkbook that belonged to my victim. He called me. We, you know, do lots of search warrants and investigation. Right. I was able to obtain a search, uh, an arrest warrant. Sorry, had them extradited here, and uh, was able to recover a good amount of the property back. But um, just just the interviews I had with them, they luckily I was able to speak with them, and they opened up and kind of gave me the ins and outs of this of this uh, organization. And it's a great way to just receive more intel. Absolutely. Yeah. That's pretty, like, I, so there was a, now I want to be a detective again. Mm -hmm. The, no, there's a lot of neat things that you just covered there. A consent search, right? Correct. I pull someone over. I have reasonable articulable suspicion based on my experience as a police officer. And I say, hey, can I search your car? Well, they didn't even think. They're like, 
what's this officer going to find, right? right He's right. just going to see this stuff. But again, we we go through training, we see things, we understand that's how that's cr fair. crime works. Yeah. Yeah. And so you have this consent search, someone just says, oh, yeah, you can go ahead and search, because people don't believe uh, that someone would just say, yeah, go ahead and search my car, right? And from that simple act of an officer doing a good job, having suspicions, doing a consent search, you were able to reunite some people with some, with with their property, and then gain a ton of insight in the interrogation. I loved interrogations. Yeah. Yeah. Do you love interrogations? Yeah, that's, that's kind of like my bread and butter. I I love interviewing people, just just trying to get to know them and trying to get really more information on whatever we're investigating. Mm. Yeah, that is, that's way that's that's one of the that is way cool. Um, both of those things coming together, and then props to the Colorado police, right? Yes. Uh, for making that call, because yeah. it would be easy just throw it away. Right, but now you've you've connected all these things, and and that is really neat. Because I, I will say, people don't understand how tough it is to close a burglary. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah. National averages closure rate for burglaries around thirty percent. Mm -hmm. Somewhere that some some jurisdictions way lower. Yeah. Some, it's generally right there around thirty percent, thirty to thirty three percent. So closing one of these is really tough, especially. Um, I'm talking a lot again. I apologize. No, no, but you're, this you're is neat. I'm going. I'm going back to. So I'm I, I will say, yeah, I don't <coughs> want to cut you off. I only have. No, please. I, I, we have one more story. Okay. One more. Yeah. You know, oh, we got another story. There's yeah. another case that he closed, again. and I think okay. this one is is incredible because I just think it shows the community that. I'll let you. I'll let you. I'll let yeah, you yeah. So, so again, like like uh, Chief Frank said, it's these cases are hard to close. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons because they are gloved up, masked up, mm -hmm. and they're professionals. They, they use all the different tactics that they have to minimize their chances of getting caught. Um, the case that we're talking about earlier was um, a case um, in 2018. So actually when I first heard about this crew. Um, and it was a case where uh, it, a big home, um, long story short, uh, the only thing stolen was a, a watch that belonged to the victim's son, I believe, that he received as a, uh, as a graduation gift, 18-year-old. It was a watch out of Macy's or something. So, um, so anyways, um, I get this case. I, I first heard about South American Theft Group. So I did my own little research. I Googled it, really, and I, and I found that Nassau County in New York um, and also, I believe it was um, Harrison Police in New York was investigating. There's some articles about it. So I did a cold call. I called their detective bureau, got in contact with the detectives over there, and they gave me really just a lowdown of how this, what this group was about. Mm -hmm. um, and in the midst of the conversation, one of the detectives was like, hey, we're actually doing a search warrant next week. Why don't you send me a list of what you got? And to be honest, I was a little embarrassed because all I had was one watch. <laughs> so, <laughs> I called over at the second district of Bethesda, and I think it was detective, uh, there was a corporal there at the time, and he was investigating a bunch of other burglaries that were South American theft group related. And I said, hey, send me your list too. So he had this long list. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I added my one watch there, sent it to the guy in New York, and they're like, okay. And then I think a week later, he called me. He said, hey, bad news, uh, a lot of it we couldn't find. The only thing we found was your watch. <laughs> and it was on top of the suspect's nightstand with the tag and everything on it still. Yeah. And again, it's all luck, right. um, but it was, it was just a great closure. Well, it's and, luck, but yeah. you did your part. Well, You're doing yeah. your job, right? And you are making those connections, making those calls right. for that victim, right? And I just yeah. think it's incredible that it wasn't just a watch, right? That meant a lot to that victim, and you followed through and, right. and did your due diligence. Yeah, yeah, and that, that was a great case. It, it ended up kind of opening my eyes to this group, um, and uh, that ended up going federal, actually, with the with the cases up in New York. So it's a great closure, and just want to show you that you know this. No matter how small you think your case might be, even if it's if just one item, versus a burglary with a million dollars worth of items that were stolen we're still gonna go through the same avenues of investigating them and we might just get lucky like I did. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, it, the whole thing is fascinating. You brought up fences, right? I don't think people understand that, that underground that exists. Yes. Uh, people think of pawn shops, but there are, look, honestly, there are back shop places that put out orders to criminal groups. We need this, we need that. Back when I was a detective, it was computers. People were burglarizing businesses all in downtown Silver Spring, mm. stealing computers, mm -hmm. because there's a fence 
down in D.C. that, uh, and I'm not singling out anyone, we gotta be careful, right? But there was an operation there that was saying, hey, you bring this stuff to me, I'll pay you cash out the back door. And then it would go out in other ways. I'm sure people are selling stuff on, I mean, who knows how they're selling this stuff? Because it, again, it's high-end items. You could probably, you, there's all kinds of avenues to sell it. You mm -hmm. could sell it out of a storefront, you could sell it in a neighborhood, you could sell it on a web, uh, a website, mm -hmm. right? You could put it on Facebook. Like, you gotta be very careful where you're getting these things, especially if you see deals that are too good to be true. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Now, safety-wise, we mentioned cameras, we mentioned a number of things, and, and I know mm -hmm. our police officers, when they go out and do burglary uh, investigations, because the first responses are patrol officers, right? Correct. And they do a, uh, a burglary survey, right, and, and give some tips to people on what they can do. So we can't leave this part of it alone. Like, what are you seeing? What, what, what should our residents be doing to prevent these things? Um, I mean, the basic answer, the, the first one that comes to mind are cameras. Um, and like I mentioned earlier, just not the front cameras that we have, but especially with this group where they like to target the back, the back. of the home, mm -hmm. try to get a camera in the back. And if, um, I, I think we mentioned earlier that um, the, the, the county's pushing towards some kind of rebate program to incentivize homeowners to get cameras. So that's just another step in the right direction. Absolutely. Um, so just getting additional cameras, actually monitoring them. Yes. And if there is uh, someone that shouldn't be in the house, call 911 and give those real-time updates for the responding officer. Right. We had talked about it the other day, making sure that you have an alert on your phone or yes. whatever device you're receiving that on to, to see immediately, hey, somebody is in my yard, somebody's yeah. in my home that shouldn't be there, and having it in real time. Correct. So then you can make that call to us so we can get out there while it's in progress yeah. and not after it's already yes. occurred. Yes. Yeah, we're, we're going to put some links on the on the video portion of our okay. podcast so you, yeah. you can get to the rebate program. And eventually we're probably going to open that to the entire county. Right now it's for in places where we have a high incidence of burglaries. But okay. So I'm going to tell you what I do around my house, right? So I got cameras all around mm -hmm. outside. Um, I have active alarm monitoring. I have uh, my camera system, and then I also have automatic lights everywhere. Like, my kids hate it because when I go into the house, I get made fun of because instead of flipping a switch, I got automatic stuff. So, I, Alexa, turn on the dining room lights. <laughs> but I can also time the lights, mm. yeah. right? Because that's one of the things they're looking for. And even when I go on vacation, uh, I'll set up a TV or a radio or something to come on and off uh, to, because I know, unfortunately I know from my history of knowing investigations and knowing these burglars, those are the things they're looking for. They're looking for no TV at night. Yes. They're looking for no sound in the morning. They're looking for all of these things. And we can do better at protecting our homes. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you just use the technology that's available to you. Um, like you said, that's, that's perfect. Just having those motion sensors or even having it to trigger at certain times to have the appearance that it's occupied is another right. great way. And just, just with that, um, I've also, just from my interview from that one, um, that arrest that I had with the, you know, from the Colorado incident. Um, and when I interviewed the guy, I actually asked him, I said, what's one thing that deters, like you would ask to not touch this house? He said dogs. Dogs are one yeah. thing. He said he would not touch a house with a okay. dog. So that's this another tip that I like to tell uh, my victims, um, if they choose to do so, it's, it's a great idea to kind of prevent and deter now, now that you say that, yeah, because I was thinking back, uh, I only ever ran one burglary call at a house with an alarm, a house with an alarm. Businesses are separate, mm -hmm. right? Um, but I only ran one at a house with an alarm, and that was way out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the people that hit it were more than likely an organized group. They knew that it was going to take us a minute to get there, because they get, they get in and out, right? Yep. They know right where they're going. Oh, yeah. Which is another thing that you were going to talk to us about, because mo the, these folks know. I go up, I go to the master bedroom, and I go to the dresser, yeah. and and because there's going to be jewelry there, yep. or I'm going to go into my uh, master closet because mm -hmm. that's where the uh, Gucci bags or what the Louis really Vuitton section is, yeah. my shopping section, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. so so that that's precisely what they do. They, they their mo their mode of operation is the second floor entry, 
master bedroom, master closet, and they don't waste any time. They, they, they're in and out. My most recent one I had, um, a lot, I mean, it was huge monetary loss. Um, they were in and out under six minutes, and, wow. and the folks were just out for dinner. Yeah. And so it's a very short time. They don't need much time, and mm -hmm. they're disappearing back out into the woods. They're not even coming through the front. So, again, another way for them to avoid and kind of cross paths with law enforcement when they respond. So. Now, you had mentioned keeping things in obscure areas, right? Yes. Like not exactly where that group would think they were going to be. So keeping it somewhere else in your home that normal people would not think to. Yeah, um, yeah. I generally recommend my victims, you know, keep keep your jewelry, especially heirlooms, family things that can't be replaced. Yeah. Um, even use safe deposit boxes at banks um, if if it's that important to you. Well, just a just a safe in your house. Yeah. I mean, it, just a safe in your house, because I have a safe. Uh, because I can't imagine I have a couple things that are nice. I don't want to disappear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, I know how quickly, and it's. It's interesting because you see people and their wealth and things they buy, right? Like, I, I've, seen, I've seen Rolex watches that cost $20,000. And it blows my mind that you have $20,000 to spend on a Rolex watch and you can't spend $100 on a safe yeah. that you just bolt to the floor. Like, the simplest of safes. So, so the thing about safes also, um, Yes, if they're bolted to the floor, that's excellent. Right. But I would even put those in obscure locations. Right, right. Only right. because they're actually going to the master bedroom closet and they're ripping these out. Okay. Mm. And some are even quick enough to just kind of grind in there and take whatever property's in there. Okay. Or they'll take the safe as a whole if it's small enough. Right. Okay. So really, I'm not going to tell you where mine is. <laughs> <laughs> so really just, I guess, think it through. Yeah. Um, and, and just use good judgment in where we uh, store this property because... Um, we do have burglars also where they attempt it and they get nothing. And, and that kind of, um, um, you know, just going back to why we're getting hit in certain areas, why they keep, why, how do they know Piney Meeting House of all places? These are the same folks that are burglarizing homes all across the country, even in like Beverly Hills, mm -hmm. Hollywood. So how do they know Potomac? One is like Chief said, um, the show that kind of, you know, the show about- Brought uh, notoriety yeah, right. to this yeah, area. Correct. Yeah, correct. Um, but another thing is just word of mouth. And from my interview with uh, some of the folks that I, I locked up in the past, um, when I asked them, how'd you know about Piney Meeting House? They said it's word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after they had a good haul, they had a good hit. They're telling their friends. Yeah, he, told, he actually told me, he told another crew and they're on their way the following week. Wow. Yeah. So it's just word of mouth. So the more you secure things, the less they have to take, the less they're gonna likely to wanna come to this area and try to hit again. So. Yeah, so it's really a, a community effort Correct. Yeah, Correct. absolutely. Yeah, just a little bit of, pr and again, we encourage everyone to just research what you can do to make, people don't even have any sense, like I talk about the camera things. You can have alarm monitoring on your property for like $120 a year through, the, the, the options now are incredible yeah. for what you can do to make your house safe. So uh, especially in these areas like but, well, everyone has very valuable things in their home. It doesn't matter where you come from because you, you went out and got it. You, mm -hmm. right. you know, have feelings for that stuff. Just do whatever you can to take those extra steps because unfortunately there's these people that are, that are out there. Yes. And we'll do our best, right? Correct. You're a great example of, of, <laughs> of great killing work. it and, and, yeah. and, and making some good arrests. But again, it's tough because there are so many of these events. Yes, yeah. correct. Well. I know we would sit and, and like to speak to you further, but. Are we going to figure out the next topic? I don't know. Right. Absolutely. Well, thank you for being here with us. Absolutely. And thank you for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe and stay connected.